So I hope all of you remember whatever we have discussed till now. Limits, continuity and derivatives. Okay, I hope everything you know. So we will continue a little bit on this derivatives. First of all, let us see how we use the uh, derivative or role of the derivative in the real world. Flight path of a plane. Okay, so you know that how the uh, flight take off from a runway. After taking off, so I will explain that. So suppose that the fly, a flight is taking off from a runway and it continues the climbing for 10 seconds before it turning it to the right. Its flight path during that time period can be described by the curve in the xy plane with the equation y is equal to minus 1.06x cube plus 1.61x square 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0.6 where x is the distance along the ground in miles y is the height above the ground in miles okay uh, and the point at which the plane leaves the runway is located at the origin okay define the angle of time of the airplane when it is at the point on the flight path where x is equal to 0.5 okay so what so you need that after 0.5 miles we want to check the climb angle of climb or this uh, you i think you can see this angle, angle okay let us see this how we work the required angle of climb alpha is given by tan alpha is equal to dy by dx at x is equal to 0.5 you know the connection between tan alpha and derivative in the from previous classes by dy by dx we have we can differentiate it so we will get dy by dx is equal to minus 3.18 x square plus 3.22 x now dy by dx at x is equal to 0.5 is nothing but 0.815 therefore tan alpha is equal to 0.815 or alpha is tan inverse 0.815 that is very much approximately equal to 39.18 degrees so that the required angle of uh, air uh, required angle of climb of airplane is approximately 39 degree okay now let us see that motion along a line the position of a moving body may be specified by giving its coordinate s since s varies with the time we write s is equal to f of t where f of t is called the position function of the body now we will discuss what you mean by velocity. If s is equal to f of t, where f of f is the position function of a body moving on a coordinate line, then the velocity of the body at time t is given by nu of t is equal to ds by dt equal to f dash t. The function nu of t is called the velocity function of the body. Okay, so we assume that we are moving through a straight to a coordinate s. Okay. Then we, we have the velocity nu of t is equal to ds by dt equal to f dash of t. The function v of t is called the velocity function. Let us move, move further. If v of t is greater than 0 at, n, at a given time t, then s is increasing and the body is moving in the positive direction along the coordinate line at that instant of time. Similarly, if nu of t is less than t, then body is moving in the negative direction at that instant of time. So, see that? This is everything acted at the instant of time t. If nu of t is greater than 0, we call body is moving in the positive direction, otherwise it will be in a negative direction. Now what do you mean by speed is? If nu of t is the velocity of a body at any time t, then the speed of the body at a time t is given by modulus of nu of t is equal to modulus of f dash of t is equal to modulus of ds by dt. Similarly, we will define acceleration and jerk. These all these things you have might have been studied in your uh, physics classes, but let us keep this in our memory. If f of t and nu of t are position and velocity functions respectively of a body moving on a coordinate line, then the acceleration of the body at time t uh, is a of t that is acceleration is equal to nu dash of t that is equal to f double dash of t. Uh, that means the function you differentiate two times that function f of t you will get the acceleration and the jerk of the body at time t is j of t is equal to again a dash of t that is nu double dash of t that is f triple dash of t okay so we have a position function we have a uh, velocity function we have the speed we have the acceleration and we have the jerk now let us how let us see how this uh, de derivatives are applied in uh, economics suppose that a total cost in dollars incurred per week by a polar 
polar air corporation will manufacture x refrigerator is given by the total cost function c of x is equal to minus 0.2 x square plus 200 x plus 9000 zero x varies from 0 to 400 what is the cost incurred in manufacturing 201st refrigerator okay i think it's quite clear c is the uh, c of x is nothing but the uh, uh, cost of manufacturing x refrigerators now we wanted to check what is the cost of incurred in manufacturing the 201st refrigerator second find the rate of change of c with respect to x when x is equal to 200 we have this proof the cost incurred in manufacturing 201st refrigerator is the difference between total cost incurred in manufacturing first 201 units minus the total cost incurring the first 200 unit that is c201 minus c200 that is you can easily apply that you can have 119.8 so this is the cost incurred for uh, manufacturing 201st refrigerator rate of change of c with respect to x is nothing but c dash of x that is equal to minus 0.4x plus 200 when x is equal to 100 we have c dash of 200 is 120 that is what you mean by rate of change now let x denote a variable quantity and suppose that x changes from x1 to x2 then the change in x or the increment in x is denoted by the symbol delta x that is delta x is equal to x2 minus x1 suppose that there are two quantities x and y which are related by the equation y is equal to f of x where f can be some function if x changes from x to delta x then the corresponding change in y or the increment in y is denoted by y plus delta y it is the value of f of x at x plus delta x minus value of f of x at x that is delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x okay so this is that graph that we have discussed you can see this this is the curve y equal to f of x this is x this is x plus delta x this is f of x this is f of x plus delta x so this height is what we call delta y <clears throat> let us see next we will go to the differentials again from the same thing we work so see that the tangent line what is the property of a tangent line you see tangent line means you know that you have a curve y equal to f of x at some point a that uh, a line t is said to be a tangent of the curve y equal to f of x at some point a x equal to a if the tangent the line touches the curve at x equal to a now if using the concept you can see that as you reach nearer and nearer to the curve or at the point a you see that the di distance between the points in the line and points on the curve y equal to x becomes smaller and smaller or t becomes closest to the graph of f near to the point of tangency at p so when x is so small that means arbitrarily small the you see that <coughs> the coordinate of r on t is a good approximation of f of x plus delta x that means dy is a good approximation of y. Now consider the right triangle delta PQR. To so please draw the figure first, then uh, go on to listen to the talk. Now consider the right triangle delta PQR. We have dy, dy by delta x equal to tan theta from the above figure, or dy is equal to tan theta delta x. But the derivative of f gives the slope of the tangent line t so tan theta is equal to f dash x therefore dy is equal to f dash x into delta x this quantity dy is called the differential of y remember that this this dy and our old dy by dx dy is different that is what we told that day that dy by dx is not a fraction we have that definition let y equal to f of x be a differentiable function then the differential dx of independent variable x is dx equal to delta x where delta x is an increment in x the differential dy of the independent variable y is dy is equal to f dash x delta x or f dash x into dx we have some remarks for the independent variable x there is no difference between 
differential dx and the increment delta x both measure the change in x from x to x plus delta x. But for the dependent variable, the differentiable d dy is an approximation of the change in y delta y corresponding to a small change in x from x to x plus delta x. The differential dy depends on both x and dx. However, if x is fixed, then dy is a linear function of dx. You see, there is a graph. We will have a little bit more on linear approximations. The graph of f lies very close to its tangent line near the point of tangent c. You can see the figure 4 there. You see, it's very close. So, we cannot find any gap between the line tangent line L of x and y, y equal to f of x. You see, therefore, the value of values of f of x for x near a, near a can be ap approximated by the corresponding values of L of x, where L is the linear function describing the tangent line. Okay, since because we, we are standing here, there is no much difference between the line and this curve, we can always assume f of x to be L of x very near to a. The slope of the tangent line at a f of a is f dash a and an equation of the tangent line is y equal to l of x is equal to f of a plus f dash of a into x minus a. If we replace x by an equation in 2 and let delta x equal to x minus a then delta y is equal to f x minus f of a. For f of x minus f of a is similar to dy equal to f dash of a into delta x that is equal to f dash of a into x minus 1 or f of x is approximately same as f of a plus f dash of a into x minus a. You remember that provided that delta x is very small or x is so close to a. So, if x is far from a this will not work. Okay. But the expression on the right hand side of L, uh, equation 4 is L of x. You remember that equation of L of x is nothing but f of a plus f dash of a into x minus a. So, f of x is approximately equal to x, L of x. This is what we proved now. We call this equation for a linear approximation of f at a. Linear approximation of f at this point a. The linear function L defined by L of x equal to f of a plus f dash of a into x minus a whose graph is the tangent line to the graph of f at a f of a is called the linearization of f at a. Observe that the linearization of f gives an approximation of f over a small interval containing a. Now we will find the error. So there is always an error, possibility of error. So delta y minus dy is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x minus f dash x delta x that is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x into delta x minus f dash of x into delta x that is f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x minus f dash of x into delta x for a fixed x the quantity in the brackets depends only on x furthermore because f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x approaches to f dash f dash of x as delta x approaches to 0, the bracketed quantity approaches to 0 and delta x approaches to 0. We denote that quantity by epsilon of delta x. Remember that f is differentiable. So, limit delta x tends to 0, f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x will tend to f dash of x. Therefore, if delta x is uh, small, then delta y minus dy is a small number into small number and is a very small number which accounts for the closeness of approximation. So, this is a small topic, small section of our described test. I hope all of you follow well. We try to do the problems. Uh, if time gets, we will discuss some more problems in this regard.